perfect. So everyone, okay, perfect. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to AACUC's Commitment to Change After Hours discussion. If you have any questions during this session, please use the chat and we'll have some time at the end for Q&A. We promise we uh, spared enough time. We're, we're sure that we'll have a lot of questions. If you, uh, and I just wanted to go ahead and share today's hashtag, bear with me. <laughs> Having a little technical difficulty here, y'all. So just give me one more minute. Here we go, perfect. And please do not forget about our hashtag, hashtag commitment to change, CTC 2020, AACUC, AACUC 2020, changed CU underscore unite and CU underscore BLM. Tonight we're excited to present networking in the digital era. 38% of the world said they find it hard to stay in touch with their network. 25% of people do not invest any time in networking. Our overall goal is to either provide you with the right kickstarts to get you out of that introvert pandemic funk, or perhaps add on more oomph to your day-to-day -day human interactions. So before we begin, representing DC Credit Union, executive assistant to the CEO, as well as assist in branch operations for the past 14 years, let's give her a Zoom emoji clap, round of applause for the lovely Miss Leticia Wheeler. Thank you, Stacey. And representing Check All as executive vice president for East Coast Credit Unions, with over a decade of credit union experience who has also served for America Airlines Credit Union as a branch manager and consumer loan officer. Another Zoom emoji clap round of applause for Ms. Stacy Bryant. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Leticia. All right. You have to know the past in order to understand the present. So, Leticia and I met earlier this year during CUNA's Governmental Affairs Conference, also known as GAC, specifically at the AACUC's annual networking and Hall of Fame reception. Remember the good old conference days, y'all? Oh. Initially, Leticia had reached out to me via email, confirming my attendance to the event. Soon after, I immediately connected with her on LinkedIn. And as the doors began to open for this reception, we both were able to instantly connect and identify each other. At this point, Leticia greeted me with open arms, and of course, we were both overjoyed to finally have met. People will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel, the great late Maya Angelou. So I'm sure that many of you have heard this quote time and time again. However, the greatest takeaway from Ms. Angelou's was picking up on nonverbal cues. Letitia's smile and warm embrace allowed me to feel welcomed at a place that I've never been before. It was, indeed, it was indeed my first time at any AACUC function. Since then, Letitia and I automatically clicked and we've been able to consistently pick up the phone and reach out to one another to simply check in. So I wanna stop right here and I wanna take a quick moment and highlight just a couple of points that I want you all to take in from my first interaction with Leticia. First, the connect. The moment that Leticia emailed me to confirm my attendance, I immediately searched her and connected with her on LinkedIn. In a flash, I was able to identify her via her LinkedIn photo as well as take a minute to see her professional background. This quick research that literally took me, a, I'd say a minute, allowed her and I to mark ourselves in a room full of a multitude of credit union professionals. That's also when I met Mr. Ed Presnell there. Moreover, this allowed us to get over that gut-wrenching, ice-breaking point and allowed us to form an organic conversation. The check-in. After our official, excuse me here, after our official meet, 
I text Letitia and once again express my gratitude in being able to physically meet her. This created a reciprocal approach where we began liking and commenting on each other's social media posts, sending super casual emails, and even text with a simple have a great week message. So how about this? Have any of you played or even heard of The Sims? Well, The Sims is a series of life simulations on a video game. Players are able to create virtual people, build homes, live amongst other folks, and live their lives. Your role as a player was to pretty much ensure that your sim character ate, bathed, slept, went to school, worked, and had a social life. For advanced players, you'd, be, you'd have a house full of people where you had to ensure that all of these characters, all of these characters fulfill their aspirations or else they die. Yeah, they die. Pretty much the best way to sum it all up. A pretty neat feature that The Sims had, however, was that it ranked your network of people, family and friends, on how mutually close you were to each other. This often fluctuated. The more calls and visits you made your character have with their friends, the more the relationship grew. If you did not ensure that your character checked in with their friends and time went on, The Sims would prompt a message saying something along the lines of, listen, check on your friends, or else they won't be your friend anymore. But just like The Sims, when you meet someone, store their number, email, or even message them via social media, and do it fast before you forget. I forget all the time. So get into the reoccurring habit of simply checking in and discuss non-work items. Be human. The top of mind presence strengthens the relationship and opens so many other doors that you can't possibly imagine. So we want to take a quick moment and we want to go ahead and survey the audience via a poll. Uh, in the next couple of seconds, you'll be seeing a poll. Um, in the meantime, I'll pass it over to Leticia. So the first question is, go ahead and identify your current role. Are you a senior management of a credit union that includes C-suite, SVPs, VPs, board of directors or volunteers? Are you B? B, are you frontline employees, supervisor, member services, loan officers, call center folks? C, back office roles, IT, accounting, legal and compliance, marketing. D, vendor. Or are you E, retired, must be nice. So just give the poll maybe another minute to come up. Will the results come up? Yes, they will once everyone selects. Right. We've got about 75% that voted, so I think I'm going to go ahead and end the poll for you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Angela. Are you seeing those results? It could be because uh, someone else not. is sharing their screen. So I will read through them. So we have 27%, uh, actually the highest percentage, 38% are back office, 27% are senior management, 19% are vendors, 14% are frontline, and 3% are enviably retired. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Angela. <laughs> so, wow, we have a lot of background. That wasn't stories. me. <laughs> that was not it. So, we have another question for you. So, just tell us why you are here with us today. Are you, is it A, polish up, brush up on networking skills on this new era? B, elevate, find different ways to meet people within your industry and sustain those relationships? Or is it C, you're a rookie? I'm new to this whole networking thing and my job slash career requires it. Is there an all of the above? <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to select one. <laughs> the one that best fits your scenario. And it, it may just very well be all three, but. Right. 
we'll just uh, give folks another minute. So, and, and Miss Angela, I'll just need you to provide those poll results, please. Absolutely. I relaunched the first one by accident, but I quickly switched it. So. All right, we're getting more people voting on this one. We're at 80% already. Oh, cool. Our folks are pros now. <laughs> All right, so I've ended it and we've had 61% of us are here to elevate. 29% are here to polish up and 11% are rookies. Mm, okay. Thank you, Kylie. Thank you. All right. So now that we're, we have a good sense of our audience, we like to dive right into some simple ways that no matter your role or your experience will tremendously improve the trajectory of your career, your organization, and your overall happiness. 46.9% of people are mind wandering and not focused on the outside world or tasks at hand. This is a study published by the, uh, on psychologytoday.com. So they highlight 46.9% of people are mind wandering as Ms. Leticia just stated. Control the 50 some odd percent and be focused and engage in these first interactions. So I want to just take a quick moment, and, and here's the word silk, 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 S-I-L-K. And I want you guys to really quick use the chat, and if you can answer the following question, first thing that comes to mind, what do cows drink? You heard me right. What do cows drink? I'll give you guys a minute. Let's go ahead and look at the chat myself. All right, well. <laughs> <laughs> Some, some people said water. You got them at first, right. though. First few, you got them, Stacey. <laughs> so if you answered milk, your mind was on autopilot. All right? And this is just a quick exercise that I actually saw at another type of webinar. And I, too, guys, one second here. I, too, went autopilot on y'all. Okay? I, went, I, I answered milk. I answered milk. Um, so here, here's our, now that we, we're waking ourselves up and we're trying to get ourselves out of autopilot, here's our five networking basics. So first and foremost, listen. How many of you are guilty of this? Forgetting someone's name after they literally just told you. Do you begin to zone out thinking about what's for dinner while the other person is chatting away? Be in the present moment. Give your full attention to this, to this person. Stop trying to multitask by looking at emails or your social media feeds while you're on the phone with them, even on a Zoom call. Stop trying to control the conversation and fill every sign and gap if it's just you and that other person. Let it be about them. Engage. Consistently repeat their names at the start of every response. Ask about their hobbies, their interests. Discuss non-work-related topics and find some other common ground. Reserve judgment. Be compassionate and empathetic. See where the conversation goes. There's a good chance that this new connection will be more interested in you and what you do after you made them feel recognized. Dale Carnegie says it best. We all have an innate, unquenchable desire to know that we are valued, to know that we matter. Number two, words of affirmation. So I know that y'all probably know about the five love languages. Yes, I took it off of that. Okay. But five networking basis. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. Second, words of affirmation. As these relationships unfold through conversation, appreciate and vocalize their work, their interests, their hobbies. For example, back at AA Credit Union at my former employer, anytime I had any interaction with any of the folks over at the member care services department, which was a team that had to deal with, with family members crying in their ears, notifying them, notifying of their loved ones passing. I'd reach out and just them and just show them my support. A simple Mary, I appreciate the support that you consistently provide our members during their tough times. That simple message, no matter the channel that it was delivered by, the fact that you took time to notice and recognize them is what very well may be what that employee needed to hear. Remember, instead of flattery, be sincere. Why? 
because to every action, there's a reaction. Those around you receiving these affirmations will more than likely pay it forward to their colleagues, their friends, their family, and so forth. And I know so because Oprah said that. Number three, gratitude. Thank people, thank people for carving out the time to meet and or speak with you. Thank people for their business or even considering your business. Thank a team member for including you. Thank them for taking the time to guide you. Thank them in advance and thank soon after. Thank them for your own resilience throughout this time of social unrest and a global crisis, yet still showing up and showing out. You simply feel better when you focus on positive emotions. You feel more connected with others when gratitude is in play. A paper in the Journal of Applied Sports Psychology found that athletes who expressed their gratitude to their coaches had higher reported levels of self-esteem. Imagine that. Thanking others makes you more confident. Number four, check in. How many of you keep up with your family, friends, or colleagues via social media? How many? It's like you know their entire life situation by their posts and comments. Meanwhile, you haven't physically seen them in years. Keep in the know of your network of people, liking, commenting, and now almost all social media channels have the capability of sending voice notes to make your interaction that much more personal. Use them. Um, as a vendor myself, one of the things that I try to do in connecting with just everyone in, in our industry is once someone accepts my connection on, on LinkedIn, I'll go ahead and instead of typing, thank you for your connection, I actually send literally a 15-second voice note, thank you for your connection. I hope all is well. That's a game changer. It's a game changer. <clears throat> so when that person comes to mind, I want you to go with your gut, and I want you to contact them. Timing's everything. A simple how's it going text, email, call can lead to the person on the other end of the phone or the email saying, hey, I'm glad you reached out. A position at my credit union just opened up, and I think you'd be the best candidate for the job. 85% of positions are filled by networking. Last, repeat. The consistent pattern of listening, really listening, constant and genuine affirmation, expressing your gratitude, establishing reoccurring check-ins by including it in your daily or weekly routine, repeat this cycle, and I promise you, it will massively improve your organizational synergies and operational productivity. So I'd be remiss not to share the Zoom stage with Leticia at this moment. As her and I prepare for this discussion, she mentioned that at one point in her life, she dreaded building new relationships. Leticia? Thank you, Stacey. So as she said, yes, I hate it. And hate is a strong word, but I hate it, hate it, hate it. Talking in front of people, interacting with people. But within my job profession, I was forced to learn how to do that. And I, I, to help me, I went to CUNA Management School and I'm a class of 2018, so woohoo to all of those manage CUNA Management School graduates. But this school was phenomenal. It helped me to how to engage with the audience with my eyes, how to stand, how to use great posture. It taught me how not to use fillers like um, uh, you about. So it taught me how to use correct English, as we all like to say. Um, and just communicate and it we got time to practice and it also just gave me the passion and the ability to be able to be that first person when they said who would like to go first who would like to present I always went first I always raised my hand I was prepared so in doing that I was like if I go first I can sit back relax and listen to everyone else so that this school gave me that ability to do so and build my confidence up to want to talk in in public and now in this time of age zoom and go to our pit of pivotal using in this time of age zoom go to meeting microsoft teams um webex so we're all interacting virtually so this way is if i use now that you do intro introverts e introduce e, e introductions where 
a colleague might come to me and say, hey, Tisha, can you check your network? I'm looking for a lending product. I'll e introduce them. And then a couple of days, I'll follow back up with my colleague to say, how did it go? And I'll also follow back up with my network person because I have a network with them. And it's important that I don't lose that connection um, with connecting them with another person. So it's important that we all just network even through using the computer or phone or just yep. texting. Um, and you'll keep that networking person for life. Thank you so much, Leticia. That is great information. And I hope it, I see in the chat, it's resonating with so many others who also attended the CUNA Management School. So let's go ahead and uh, just uh, now kick this, now that I, we gave you these five basic networking languages, if you will, uh, let's go ahead and, and, and use that information as well as Leticia's success story and turning it into how to, how to morph it, if you will, into the digital world. So how many of you, if you can do this on the chat really quick and, and just type yes, how many of you are on LinkedIn today? And you can even virtually uh, raise your hand. How many of you check? Yeses. Okay. <laughs> well, and out of those yeses, how many of you actually check it every single day? Yes, every single day even multiple times per day. What is your LinkedIn headline? Does it create impact? Now more than ever, people all around the world are easily accessible through this platform. And this is the platform that everyone on this call and many others listening in should be tapping into. LinkedIn is an important tool in terms of professional social networking. Whether to find a new job, recruit, find a colleague or a client, the uses of LinkedIn are dynamic. Today, people are open to connect more than ever. So what do you need to do? Increase your LinkedIn connection. A TEDx University video on how to hack networking states that we are all separated by six degrees. Your goal is to have more than 501 connections. Yes, I said more than 501. Now that is easier done than said. Tap into your circle of connections and ask for introductions, as Leticia just mentioned, to their connections. Make it your goal to connect to at least four to five people per day and simply shoot a note or a voice note for that matter. I'd be delighted to network, network with you. That, that's it. That's all. Here are three ways on how to redefine your networking. Number one, reconnect with your old friends whether on LinkedIn or even going through your cell phone's contact list, which I'm sure y'all is mighty long. Just randomly connect. Number two, turn work friends into real friends. You'll be surprised to see what you and your colleagues have in common outside of the workplace. Lastly, number three, connect through friends of friends. That connection of a connection of a connection may open doors beyond belief. Leticia? Thank you, Stacey. So we're going to bring it all together. Now that we've addressed our own successes and shared some the critical networking basics, let's do that. How can we help each other help ourselves? Here are a few examples. So if you're here to polish up, brush up on your networking skills during this new era, a way to do this may simply be by engaging with your colleagues and understanding their strengths. You'll be able to identify talent within the organization that you can ultimately refer to higher positions. It's as simple as involving different employees to project and collaborate by making people feel included, recognized for their efforts. And that pays dividends. When you show that you can identify talent within the organization, the company will recognize you as someone that can identify talent and potentially manage talent. This essentially helps build your career when you build others. For those that say that you're here to elevate and find different ways to meet people within your industry and sustain those relationships, here are some tips for networking outside of the credit union. Similar to building relationships and engaging within your internal colleagues, potentially finding talent elsewhere, for example, other credit unions. Those new connections may very well be people that you know will thrive 
and will help fill gaps in your organization today. On the other side of the spectrum, if you potentially at a credit union and you find that you're looking for another opportunity in another area, being able to connect with other credit unions may help you position yourself to where you want to be and where you want to go. The importance of vendors relations. We also wanted to share some tips on why vendor relationships are important to your organization. So why does networking with vendors, so what does networking with vendors get you? Better deals overall, better agreements that will ultimately be more cost effective and help improve operations within your credit union. The DEI vendor involvement piece. Now more than ever, working with a vendor that helps you help the broader community is crucial where vendors practice to be better stewards of the social efforts that are going on right now. Organizations want to be tied to allies who share the same belief. Never has there been more of a push to put your money where your mouth is. Both of these vendor relationship efforts help you, the individual again, be reflective as a leader to your peers as well as your existing leadership. If you're able to bring in additional or better vendors that help certain organizational needs and operational efficiencies or DEI, you being able to be that person who can help bring those relationships in, improve their relationships or even improve the credit union overall, you will shine. Leadership will identify you as a viable member of a team as well as a future leader, if not a leader already. If you're working and new to this whole networking thing, Seek out mentors in finding out how you better position yourself to learn enough and build a network of people that can support you is key. Part of AACUC's mission statement pinpoints just that. Find people in different professional fields that will also look out for you personally and professionally. Whether they are in your field or vendor that supports your field, be selective, yet be open, be vulnerable and be interested. Stacy, Thank you, Leticia. So all in all, remember to be human. Bring it all together. Treat others how you expect to be treated. No one wants a barrage of what's important to you. Make people feel included. Success begins with relationships. We hope that you've been able to at least take one gem from our networking discussion. Thank you. So at this time, um, if we have any questions or if anyone would like to share, and I'm going to go ahead and actually open my chat so that I can see that as well. So let's use this moment right now. Are there any questions um, or anything that you were looking for in really trying to master or perhaps there's been a big challenge that we did not touch on? Can anyone share those challenges that you're having, successes that we can add on to here from our, for our AACUC families? Um, and also take this moment and perhaps recognize something that's really been working for you, right? Uh, and I, we're looking at the, the chat right now. Uh, Ms. Angela, were, were there any other questions that we saw earlier? I have not seen any, but if you want to stop your screen share, we'll be able to see everyone's smiling faces. Perfect. Lovely. Yes. And if you have additional networking tips, how do I remember people's names? How do I fit in all of these things? Please that's, share that's those. A great as one. Well. I'll go ahead and actually uh, share the, the name one. And this happens to me quite often. And I'll, I'll just go ahead and I'll, uh, I'll look at, uh, let's go ahead and pick on my good old friend, Miss Opal. So if I just met Opal for the very first time and Opal tells me her name, one of the things that I'm going to do as I'm listening, right, I want to listen and I want to engage, is basically say, hi, all right, my name is Opal, so on and so forth. Hi, Opal. Well, thank you. Lovely meeting you. And we'll speak about whatever it is that she's speaking about. I want to ensure that in every single response, Absolutely right. I know. I'm, you're absolutely right, Opal. Uh, this, it is a crazy time, Opal. And she may be a little annoyed in the back of her mind, like, why is she <laughs> saying my name over and over again? However, you, it's, it's a statistic that you must repeat that person's name 
over and over in every single response. And by all means, if they mention to you, let's say that they do have another type of name where it isn't traditionally pronounced a certain way and you didn't catch it that first time, go ahead and ask. Ask. Do not assume. We all know what happens when, uh, when you assume. So and, and, I'm happy you mentioned that. And Stacy, if I can add, so another way, like, so my name is pronounced Letitia, but a lot of people say Letitia. So another thing that I um, use, and I always say, if you ever heard of the Boston Tea Party and tea, so when you pronounce my name, you can say Letitia. So that's another trick. Some people use analogies like a riddle or a joke or another name or a famous person that they love and connect that with their name too, so. That's great information, Letitia. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other best practices, y'all? Don't tell us that Letitia and I did a remarkable <laughs> job. I know, <laughs> speak at once. I got one for you. Um, oh, go ahead, Mr. Carl. And that is um, be patient when you first meet people. You know, don't expect all this to happen in one meeting. That's or right. even one session, um, because I can tell you, uh, being in AACUC for a number of years, it took a few years to kind of get to know a lot of people. And so mm -hmm. I always tell people when they first come into the organization, just be patient because everybody, you know, gets to know everybody over time. Um, it's an organic process. And so That's I would right. just leave everybody with that tip. Just be patient. And everybody really wants to be your friend, but sometimes we have to kind of overcome some some things, some barriers with each other. <laughs> and, and just uh, got, uh, and I'm so sorry, but I just wanted to add on to Carl too. Um, in my research, uh, I'm not sure if anyone ever took improvisation uh, or improv 101. But part of Improv 101 is basically you want to go with the flow, right? Improv 101 is yes and and, and that's huge. Um, so, Carl, if I'm a sales lady, which I, which I am, but, uh, but if I'm a sales lady and I'm meeting you and I want your business, I'm not going to talk about business right now. Um, I, I need to engage Carl. Carl, how are you? How have y'all been doing during this pandemic season? Um, and, when, and as you respond, um, you may say something that perhaps I may not feel that particular way, um, but I am going to go ahead and agree in the most professional way and proceed and carry on. Um, and it's Improv 101. You want to go with the flow, and again, you want to make it about Carl. Make it about the other person. Um, I just have to go ahead and add that. I'm sorry, Miss Angela. It's all good. My question for you, I know you showed four different LinkedIn profiles, but have you found anybody's LinkedIn profile, and this goes for anybody, that you go, whoa, this is so good. I need to kind of copy what they're doing on mine. So mine kind of gets beefed up a little bit because I've got the header that looks nice, but then down underneath, I don't have a lot of details. So can you recommend anybody, a couple people that we might want to model ourselves after? I absolutely. I'm actually opening my LinkedIn now, and uh, there is Angela there is, is a great person to model, although she, she will not put she herself. Is. But I'm going to put Angela <laughs> as a great person. Um, so I want to share my screen really quick, and this this uh, this fella, he is not in the credit union industry, uh, but. It was his headline captivated me to no end. And before I read it, I just want to share this screen with you. One second. All right, come on, technical difficulties. Come on up. All right, here we go. So let me know uh, when you guys are all seeing my screen. Yes, we see, I see it. We see Perfect. It. So take a look at this. The guy's clearly in marketing. And he's the Tom Brady of marketing. And he put a gold. Gold is the greatest of all time. Uh, freelance digital marketing consultant. And if that, if that is not impressive, <laughs> by all means, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, we're not going to talk the, the, about the cheating of Tom Brady, but we'll just give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, 
let's go also go ahead. I have to highlight Kevin Martin, our very own Kevin Martin. Uh, I love instead of saying, you know, he's the SVP or strategic partnership and DE and I, he went ahead and he added passionate about helping people and organizations exceed their expectations. And lastly, I want to go ahead and actually go to our very own Wesley. Wesley. He's an influencer. I mean, he switched it up, right? And uh, and it's all about what do you do for people, right? And 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 how does your job help others? And think about that and see how you can flip it. Letitia, would you agree? I would agree totally. I love Wesley's. Um, when I saw his profile, I didn't even look at the words. I just saw the background that said "do something great." So I, that caught my attention right away. Um, so you want to do things that like catch the attention, but you're also aware that whatever attention you draw draw towards people interacting with you, you can also share because it's it's networking. Like a lot of times, people network, but then they don't share. So you have all this information, all these Bible resources and Bible people that you know, and then you mm -hmm. want to share it with other people so they can connect and um, grow. After all, most a lot of us are in credit unions, right? So it's people helping people, and think of it, people helping people network and build yeah. relationships that you might not expect that you will build a relationship from. And be open-minded and be present. And you said something too, Leticia, it's even a people helper, right? How about that? Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm sorry, someone was going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say something. Well, go ahead. I'm sorry. Mr. Ed, please. Well, I was going to say that uh, over the last few years or last, oh gosh, whatever, but LinkedIn has become more and more uh, the business go-to and it's oh, yeah. easy to distinguish and it's very important to realize the difference between LinkedIn and Facebook and, in, and Instagram and all the others. You need to have a professional image on LinkedIn. That's right. Nothing else because people are there are headhunters all over the place as well as networkers who need help going to LinkedIn and Facebook's a silly page. I mean, it's fun, but it's, it's not, it's not where you want to advertise your business, business at all, acumen. That's right. I'm, I'm so glad you pointed that out, uh, Mr. Ed. It's, that picture uh, must be a professional picture. Um, and, 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 and just show people smiles, right? Everyone remember smizing? Just smile. Smile with your eyes. Um, so, you know, just, just if, if anything, you want to really convey through your image, um, just what you what you bring to the table. <laughs> Y'all have me roaming on this chat, by the way. Just letting you know, I was, <laughs> I get too distracted. <laughs> I mentioned the bus meeting strategy uh, from Gary V. Um, so it's leaving your two cents on uh, ten posts um, from the nine best topics of your industry. Um, so whatever mm. those hashtags are, uh, kind of trolling through the the top nine, and then leaving your two cents on 10 posts from each of those. So that's like a buck 80 uh, every day. That is killer. That is, thank you so much, Mitchell. We appreciate that. And part of uh, when Leticia was mentioning about elevating, if you're here to elevate, if you're here to polish up, that's part of right. engaging, specifically engaging on LinkedIn. That's the way nowadays that you engage. You engage by commenting, you engage by liking. And that literally, Mitchell, what is that? A couple of seconds is that, right? Um, it's not going to really take uh, any, any particular significant time out of your day. Um, so it's, uh, if anything, you know, it's just a matter of restructuring your day-to-day your, your -day agenda um, and adding it on. I mean, I'm sure everyone gets Facebook notifications or any other social media no notification. If you already have a LinkedIn, as I mentioned, be a bit more proactive. There's a lot of YouTube uh, uh, LinkedIn 101 on really allowing you to build that uh, that LinkedIn if we haven't already covered it today. Um, but I just doing that once a day and doing that buck 80 uh, uh, challenge, if you will, why not? Put yourself out there. Thank mm. you, Mitchell. And now that we've got everybody's first and last names and we <laughs> see your eyeballs, we're all about to creep on all of you and give you LinkedIn <laughs> requests. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's right. 
That's right. That's right. Or With that, I'm sorry, Leticia, you're on mute. You did. I said, what you can do is find me and Stacy on LinkedIn and connect with us, and then we'll connect. That's right. I, I'm, I'm, that was a beautiful segue, Leticia. I, uh, and we'll, we'll definitely uh, serve and pay it forward and, and have you connect with our connections, right? And vice versa. Uh, let's make sure that everyone participating on this chat today, everyone participating on the call, everyone streaming through YouTube, uh, let's make sure that we all connect and we pay it forward. So any other questions or comments before we come to an end? Going once. All right. So we look forward to having you all join tomorrow's general session on leadership in time of crisis at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you, each and every one of you, for carving out the time yes. this evening. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good evening. Have a good evening. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. You got it, Mr. Ed. Thank you. Do you want to stay on? Great job, ladies. So well Thank done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, YouTube family and folks. Thank you. <laughs> we had like a nice Thank thing. you, Miss Deborah Fears. Thank, Thank you, Deb. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> Can't wait for you. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> no pressure, guys. Thanks. <laughs> yes. I will see you guys tomorrow for sure. All right. You got okay. it. You got it. All right. Good night. Good night. Okay, do this with me. We did it. We finished. Virtual high fives. <laughs> high fives. And, Mr. Yeah, and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Sue, or Sue and Nicole, high fives. Thank you. Well. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well done. It was, Thank it you. was a lovely, 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 lovely chat. Um, I'm just like, I, I kept being distracted because everyone just started giving great information, information. on the chat um, and, and dropping their nuggets. I love that 180 strategy. I'm just mm -hmm. looking through it. Um, oh, so perfect. So the chat will all be saved. And Sandy okay. awesome. has offered to go through and kind of clean them up a little bit so that we've got like awesome. the, the hi, how are you? Good to see you kind of stuff is chopped off. And the really good stuff is in the middle of it. And we'll keep people's names associated with it too. So. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Yay. Really good content on, on the chat. Really good content. Yeah. Do you ever find networking is a lot of maintenance and exhausting? Would you? Oh, we didn't. Okay. Yeah, I'm so sorry. It's okay. No, it was. It's all the way at the top. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm thinking maybe I let me see if I can copy that and maybe I can address it in the in the exhibitor hall forum that we have going on. What are your thoughts? I think that's great. What time? I I I don't. What time does the the general session starts at four four thirty Eastern time, right? Three o'clock Eastern time. Three o'clock. Okay. Three to four thirty. Three to four thirty. Okay. All right. I'll see you, I'm lovely ladies, tomorrow morning. Huh? Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. There it is. Okay, so that's Jackie. That's Jackie Sinatra. Oh, from Visa. Okay. okay. Yep. Let me put her name because I didn't mention this. Jackie Sinatra. Perfect. Okay. Ladies, I'll see you in the morning. Sleep well. Right. You too. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>